you're not as critical of, of the rhythms that you're playing and how you're executing them as you should be. I mean, for me, I always get to play with guys that had great time, in particular there's a drummer in Kansas City named Tommy Ruskin, you might have even heard because he plays in Wichita. But he had like great time and he just wouldn't accept anything that was rhythmically awkward or inaccurate or if it was like supposed to be this and it wasn't quite, he, would, he wouldn't say anything but he would let you know that it wasn't cool. And it seems like you need to get much more critical about how specific your rhythms are. Um, I mean, just to give you an example, I'll just get this guy. Do you have a drum machine or, or anything, or a metronome? I mean, that's, it's good to tape yourself a lot and play with it. And for me, when I'm playing, I'm here, I'm subdividing my mind like triplets. I mean, I can't sing it, but that's everything that I'm playing, whether I'm playing on top or behind or whatever, I'm always like hearing that, not even in my mind, actually in my stomach. I mean, that's always going on. And, and having played with a lot of good drummers, I notice that's what they do. Even people like Dijon Matt or, or Roy Haynes or somebody who's really going to mess with it, there's always this undercurrent of whatever the, the smallest subdivision is. And, and their limbs don't ever have to play. It's just like they're, like, by virtue of them being there, all those subdivisions are being heard. And if you play something that's a little off, like there, I was just playing way behind, as long as you're hearing those subdivisions, it sounds like it's swinging. But if it's not, if you're not hearing everything that you're not playing, as well as what you are playing, it's going to sound like you're floating on top. So the idea would be to practice things like with a metronome or a drum machine, putting them all kinds of different ways. Like right now, I'm playing just right with it. But I can also play way behind it and make it feel different. So I'm behind now, get back with it. Play four notes, but all the time, even though I'm just playing, I'm here to do little, 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 little,
there's two guys, and I mean, I should not to say that, I mean, I know that you, you're already very aware of it, but the more that you can really get a detailed, hands-on feel of, of what Charlie Parker and Coltrane did, I mean, the more you've got it, because that's, those are the two um, real, like, vivid examples of how to get it so that the lines are, are inside the rhythm section rather than on top, which to me is always the goal, where, where you're actually, when you're playing a solo or something, you're like in there with the bass and drums, you're not writing on top. And that's something very few, hardly any guitar players can do, and very few jazz guys, period, can do. There's a lot of guys who float and who are on top playing with a rhythm section, but there's very few guys who actually are like in there getting their hands dirty harmonically and rhythmically all at once in the, in the context of their solo. To me, that's always the most appealing kinds of players. I mean, like, you know, as far as contemporary guys, I mean, there's Brecker who can really do that. Um, Love him. Yeah, he's fantastic. Schofield is one of the guitar players that can do it. Jim Hall's always been able to do it. Wes Montgomery did it. Um, you know, it's that thing where there's no difference between what the rhythm section is playing and what the soloist is doing. Okay, I'm not sure I'm following you. Real clean. Yeah. So, like, for instance, when I'm playing now.
I'm not consciously trying to outline the changes. I mean, I like to kind of, I mean, I know I should be able to, but I just had a tendency to work over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I figured, well, the piano playing the bass player is banging out the change. That's but, good. That's fine. And the, the thing to do is to take that concept and try to play over it. And be able, be able to do that, but also be able to do it the other way. Right. So, so that you can, I mean, you know, the ideal situation is to be able to do anything. And then to be able to decide what you're going to do at the time, rather than um, only being able to do certain things and sort of having to do those things. You know, same with phrasing. I mean, it's good to be able to phrase all kinds of different ways, rhythmically as well as um, you know, in terms of how you're going to pick it and everything, so that you can do it a lot of different ways. As if, like some guys, for instance, only phrase like by picking. Right. And, and, and to be able to, to phrase it that way, that you can do it depending on how you want the line to say. Some guys just can't switch in the middle of the line. They're either not picking or they're picking. And, and I mean, it's even a, a goal of mine is to be able to really get that together so that I can phrase it all kinds of different ways, not just have to do it as a kind of slippery way if I want to articulate each note, I can do that too, and be able to real freely get back and forth between all the different kinds of phrasing that you're capable of. As well as this thing I was saying before, of being able to play way on top or way behind or right in the middle at will and be able to switch amongst them in the context of the line just like on a dime. Um, and how are you thinking harmonically? I mean, well, I, I don't mean just so much on blues, but I mean, your playing is like, you do a lot of like, I don't really know how to explain it, but like Mike Brecker, you can hear him covering the chains and then it's like, it just kind of steps out of it and comes back. Well, but the thing is, it's not, it's not really that so much as, as, as doing that thing of just, I mean, it, at this point, it's, it's very difficult for me to play anything that I hear as being outside of the chords. Because if everything that I play, I see it as relating to, I mean, you know, with the exception of major sevens on minor seven chords, I can pretty much hear all 12 tones on any chord now. And that, that was something that took a long time to get together. But I mean, like, if, I, if I'm playing that note and it's on a C, I mean, I'm generally hearing all the notes below it that would lead to it. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, so you're not thinking, you're just thinking the stages. Exactly. Yeah. And then so to get that... So if it's like, like it's yeah, yeah, like for instance on a blues, I mean, if, if I'm playing... And then I do like a... Or something like that, I mean, I, I just started thinking of, you know, like if it's that chord, you know, there's all these other notes up here that become extensions by the point in the lower, lower registers. follow it. You know, it's like, that's what people respond to on a much more uh, kind of um, instinctual level, more than notes. And I mean, there's a million saxophone players who know all the hip shit that Brecker knows, but it just doesn't sound as good when they play it. I mean, you know, he's a great player, but his time is nowhere near as good as Brecker's. And Brecker's, you know, got the thing in a way that won't, even though actually 
probably more harmonically creative than Brecht. I mean, he, he knows more shit than just about anybody in terms of how to do that thing. But you're saying it comes across more because of his rhythm? Because of Brecht's rhythm is just like, I mean, it's like a, a truck, you know, going down a hill. I mean, it just, it's just fantastic. And, and that kind of rhythm feel is absolutely the hardest thing to get on a guitar because, because we have such a, a small dynamic range relative to those guys. How did you develop that? Just working with a metronome? And yeah, and, and playing a lot. I mean, you know, I've, I've pl probably played more hours per day than you know, most people ever get the opportunity to. I mean, I just have had lots of chances to do it. And, and I'm also very aware of what makes something or I try to be aware of what makes something have that kind of feel. And, and it was pretty clear to me that the difference between like Wes Montgomery and Jim Hall and, and everyone else was rhythm. And that, and that was pretty easy to see early on. I mean, the way Jim plays rhythm is, would be unacceptable on any other instrument. I mean, just wouldn't have the thing. It would sound stiff. And, and, and most guitar players have that, that kind of phrasing. It's a, it's a phrasing that if you were to imagine in your mind Clifford Brown or somebody playing it, it wouldn't be believable. And, um, you know, the best thing you can do is just really listen a lot to people who have great time and, and try and get that same feel. But the only people I listen to are like horn players, Miles, Train, um, tons of like Brecker, anything he's on. I mean, I listen to like Miles and Train, yeah. I listen to a lot of your stuff. Sonny Rollins is good to listen to also because his lines tend to be easy to play on the guitar. I mean, they're not, a lot of Coltrane shit is so hard just to execute on the guitar because of all the, the leaps and all that. And also his thing was so, um, just his sound, he had another thing, which is his sound was so unbelievable that the way some guys can get, get away with playing something that's maybe not that effective just on a technical level, but it's got the thing rhythmically. He's also got that, plus his sound was so, like, you know, pure and everything that he could just play one note, which, I mean, you can never get that same thing on a guitar. Yeah, Sonny, that's what he yeah, yeah. Sonny's thing is very instructive, I mean, because also another area that a lot of guitar players I'm so good at is is keeping it going for long stretches. I mean, like where you take one little idea and just make it last for a whole solo. Guitar players have a tendency to because the guitar is sort of mechanical to to move on, like go on, you know, rather than just like land with something specific. And Sunny is really great to listen to 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 get discipline about making little out of, or making a lot out of a little. And, and also rhythmically, he's got the thing. I mean, in a way, I mean, for me, more than almost anybody, trying to emulate his way of playing helped me on the guitar. So, yeah. When you were, to go back a minute, when you're thinking like subs and things, are you thinking also like extensions off of those? Absolutely. So when you play a sub, you don't just lay out like right or fifth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. In fact, it's rare that you would play the, the root at all. I mean, you would think of the third and seventh and the extensions of that. That's what you think. And like all the extensions and everything. And that's what all that cold range is. All of it. It's just, it's generally five, like, dominant seven chords in tri doing substitutions with each other with all of the extensions available all the time. I mean, the, the, it's hard to find notes that he played that didn't fall into that category I mean, in terms of Don Seven chords with a two in front of it. Mm -hmm. and, and all of the extensions available all the time. But it all ties in, you're saying more rhythmic. Yeah, out. I mean, and especially just a little bit that I heard from you now. I mean, I think all that harmonic information is stuff that you can learn. And, and you can get it together and all that sort of thing. The rhythm thing is something that is going to be very difficult. I mean, it's because of the instrument. It's, it's really hard to get on the guitar. And um, it seems like you're quite a bit further away from that than you are from the harmonic thing. I mean, 
mean, that I would say that's like a major project for you um, to really get it so that there's there's a a sense of rhythmic definition and rhythmic power that that is underneath everything. And and it's not something you can do by yourself either. I mean, you really have to do it in in the context of your body with a drummer than you do when you're playing by yourself in a room. And um, you know, it, it just I mean it means hours of playing every day with somebody who's really good and who's really uh, also got that as a as a priority, that sort of rhythmic weight. You know? I mean, short of playing with a good drummer, playing with a drum machine is is the I mean it's something that we have available to us now that people younger than us didn't. I mean, because these things, you know, have got all that and you crank them up. Loud. I mean, it's like playing with the real thing to a large degree. I mean, and in terms of rhythmic precision, I would say it's better to play with that than to play with a bad drum. Mm-hmm. Um, Can we try like a couple more courses with mm-hmm. the drum? Sure. Have another go.
the rhythm of, of the sense is sort of like you're saying, and the, uh, you know, or something like that, as opposed to like ending it with a period, like okay, that's the end of that, and that's the end of that. I mean, you know, later you might want to get it so that you sound sort of like uh, staggered, you know, like you're kind of like leading towards something and you're not quite getting to it, but better to start out with trying to make very clear, very concise kind of statements. And that thing of just playing like chord tones and playing real simple it is, is a good exercise towards that. Rhythmically, was I any closer to that? Well, rhythmically, it's still, um, it sounds to me, uh, it sounds like a guitar player, you know? And, and it sounds like, uh, sounds like you're, you're not really in it, you know, you're kind of, kind of you're not far off, but you're not really in. You know, it's, it's like you know, you're playing the same basic rhythm, but you're not like. I mean, the, the goal for me is to get it so that you, when you're playing with a drum machine, you, you ultimately don't hear the drum machine. It's like you're, the rhythms are so close, they're so precise that they cancel each other out, and that's that's a good thing to, to look for. I mean, I'm also very picky about rhythm. Much more than most people. I mean, you can talk to anybody who's played drums in my band or anything. I mean, I drive them and myself crazy about it because I really like to hear it, you know, perfect. And I have to say, all the best players, I mean, like Winton or Coltrane or Jim Hall or, you know, I mean, all the guys that I consider to be great players have a great time. And it, I, I can't think of one example of somebody who didn't. So I mean, it's it's a it's a real important thing to get. Also, when you play like this kind of thing, and this is true of, of a lot of younger guys, you know, the rhythms aren't. It's not da 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 da. It's da 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 da. I mean, they're they're all triplets, and I'm hearing you playing dotted eights and sixteenths a lot. That's not what it is. That's not what it is. It's going to write it out. Well, I know you're talking like two triplets. Right. I know what you're talking yeah. about. I mean, you should you should work on that one okay. because it's coming out, um, you know, and it should come out. Da, 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 da. I mean, virtually even eight notes. Not shorter or more staccato than the first one. It should be exactly the same. And the more that you practice, even like that. You know, I've never had anybody tell me that. Yeah, I have to work on my rhythm. You know what I mean? Well, well, somebody I, tell me now. Well, I mean, it's great, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess that's, I don't know, it's just always been, well, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know. Like I was saying, I mean, I can count about four guitar players in the world in history that had this kind of thing. You know, I mean, there's, there's just aren't any. I didn't see anybody. No, no, I understand. Because it was great. I mean, it you know, seems like everybody's always thinking harmonic. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And the thing is, I mean, there's, there's hundreds of saxophone players who have all the Coltrane harmonic shit down. I mean, down. But you don't want to hear them after a while, and, and the reason is because that other thing isn't there. I mean, I, I love hearing, I mean, I never mind if somebody's kind of an imitator of Coltrane. I mean, that's not the thing that bothers me about most of those cats. Mm -hmm. What bothers me is that, is that the rhythm thing is sort of floaty. I mean, it's like, it's on top, it's not in it. Yeah. It's real important for jazz. I mean, and it's, you know, I mean, it's also, I mean, it, it's it's weird to say this, but it's true. There's very few white cats who can do it. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I mean, there's very few. There's only a couple. And um, did you ever know a drummer in Wichita named James Van Buren? Black, black guy. Mm -hmm. I used to play with him a lot at that Zanzibar. In fact, it was his gig. And boy, he had to, he had to think. He really did. He also had no patience for like unnecessary fashion, which I was real prone to. And uh, for a few nights there, reading me, the, reading me my rights, you know. And it included more than it was.
wasn't flying fast. It's a group. Let's find another tune. Okay. Maybe something uh, like the UNA you know, style. 